Okay, guys, I'm back. <clears throat> Love is dead. I see myself a quick lunch. That's why I'm a little bit late into the draft. It is going to be EG versus IG. Two Gs going up against one another. I'm kind of excited to see this game. I don't know how Invictus Gaming is going to do against EG or how EG is going to do against Invictus Gaming. The picks I'm a little bit late on. A lot of bit late on. EG is going to pick up uh, Invoker, Chen, Lone Druid, so they're going to go for the push lineup. Still pretty open in terms of what they can pick up for supports. Darkseer, Morphling, Tidehunter, and Venomancer. Maybe picked up by Invictus Gaming. These two, these two, man, these two carriers we have the Lone Druid and we have the Morphling. They're just so powerful. And they've been powerful the entire game. The entire, the entire series. They've been extremely popular lately. And EG is going to go for a massive push lineup. We have Invoker, Lone Druid, Lushrak, Chen. They can all push. You have the Forged Spirits. You have the Creeps that Chen can get. Lone Druid's got his Bear. Lushrak's got his Diabolic Edict. Templar Assassin is interesting. I'm going to see if they're going to be able to get off kills with that. They should be able to pop off uh, Lushrak and Chen pretty easily. At least I'm pretty vulnerable. I think that means we're going to see... Actually, who plays the uh, Templar Assassin? The Ferrari that is in mid lane. Are they going to put Templar Assassin? Or uh, are we going to see something else? Just to see what they're going to pick up. The Darkseer, he is actually going to do a good amount of work here against the... Uh, if he's able to replicate the Invoker and the Lone Druid. He should be able to pressure in the lane if he's faced up against the Lone Druid. Early in the matchup. I wonder if we're going to see a Morphling mid middle lane... They do. They could run a tri lane though. You know, they could run a tri lane with uh, Morphling, Tidehunter, and Venomancer. It'll be a pretty strong lane. A lot of slow right there. That would be able to get Morphling some kills. And if they can go in the safe lane, that might pay off because they can pull back the creeps, get a little bit of farm inside the jungle, and not waste too much time. Evil geniuses, their lanes. Well, they're going to have Chen in the jungle. Invoker can be kind of everywhere. Keeper of the Light. He's going to be picked up. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how he fits into this one, but he, I suppose you can put him solo lane. Oh, and that's what he's going to do. EG Demon's going to take the Keeper of the Light for the solo lane. And that is a lot faster than it usually goes, the selection process. Anyway, uh, I didn't... Oh, let me get the last hits right there. Okay, so we have Demon going to be playing on the Keeper of the Light, Bulba, he is going to be playing on the Invoker going in the mid lane. It looks like Malk is going to be playing his Chen. His Fear is going to be playing the Lone Druid. And Universe is going to take the role of the Leshrac. Probably going to be a support for Fear. And it looks like, uh, it looks like I think Chen is going to, Chen and Leshrac going to run a little bit of semi-tri lane up there. And YYF is probably just going to haste up uh, one of the creeps that helps pull the lane back, or is he, I don't think he's really going in the jungle, that doesn't make, hmm, not really sure what he's going to be doing, uh, remains to be seen, they're just trying to make sure that they don't get their area warded off right now, Zoe is going to be playing the Morphling, we have YYF is going to be playing the Darkseer, it is going to be Ferrari playing the Templar Assassin, hope that's going to be exactly, incredibly exciting, Chuan is going to, Chuan is going to be on the Tidehunter, and, uh, this top lane right here is going to be defended. They want to make sure that tri lane gets the most out of it. It looks like it's going to be tri lane, not tri lane versus tri lane. It's going to be a solo lane up at the top. That should be Darkseer. And uh, if they are, they should be able to keep him down. They, it could be a hard lane for Darkseer if Chen can get off, uh, get a troll warlord early on. If he's able to do that, maybe a centaur as well. You can trap him down, and uh, that would probably be the end of him if they get a trap because the Shrek can hit that split earth through through the trap and there's actually no there's no penalty like there's no there's there's it's not like a SD where you might have to time it a little bit it's just go and actually demons are actually gonna play the top lane here they're gonna throw I wonder if they're gonna just throw away the bottom lane or if they're gonna rotate someone in four heroes in the top lane is kinda of risky and by kind of I mean extremely they really want to get some kills on darks here early on uh, and I that's the only reason that they could be doing this. Unless they're going to do like massive pulls and try to get massive farm on the on the lone druid. But this is very, very risky coming out from EG right now. IG is a team that can control this type of thing. They can pressure you very well. Uh, they really have a great early game. So 
this is this is risky. We're gonna have to see if this is gonna pay off for them. They're gonna try to get the max max jungling potential right now. And they're gonna throw away the bottom lane. That is extremely dangerous because Morphling is gonna be in the bottom lane. Morphling just such a strong hero. You don't want to get let him get out of control. Your mid game is gonna go south and with these squishy heroes, Lashrak. I mean, Lashrak, Keeper of the Light. They're gonna be focused on pretty quickly. Uh, they can get slowed up. They, I mean, Templar Assassin can come in. It's just too many options. I think. I am really worried about EG's strategy right here, and they're going to see what they are going to do. And it does look like they have Keeper of the Light going back. Perhaps he's going to switch up. Please go back into your lane. I really shouldn't. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if they're straight. I I mean I'm no pro, but we'll see what's going to be happening here. Lone Druid is actually only got seven less hits right now. Morphling is getting a better farm down the bottom lane. They are going to transfer Keeper of the Light down here. So it's just they're trying to make sure that they if they get an early first blood, they were going to try to do it, but they weren't able to do so. And now it's going to be Keeper of the Light versus Chuan and Zhao in the Zhou Zhou in the middle lane. And IG coming in here, trying to make sure that Universe doesn't get the farm that uh, going to get free farm at all. Not free farm, but you know, free jungle farm. Make sure he doesn't pull the lane too much, and doesn't want to make sure they want to get their experience. Do not want to get cheated out of that. Yeah, why, 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 why? a pretty good job in this lane. He actually only has Universe here, so it is Malak all the way over this way. Doesn't have himself a Troll Warlord, does have himself a Centaur. Does he have none of those available to him yet? No, they were actually killing them off pretty quickly uh, early on. So Universe versus Ferrari here. It's not a bad matchup. It is actually the uh, Keeper. It is actually Ferrari that's doing a little bit better in this lane. Where is Invoker? Invoker only has three last hits. Expected him to be a little bit higher at 13 last hits up here. Malk coming in, trying to pressure in the middle lane, but going to be revealed. And they're not going to be able to get off that pressure. Just going to give Bulba a little bit of room. And Pause is going to come out. Fatal error. Fatal error. <laughs> it looks like that is um, Demon that lost his computer. I wonder if that's the same computer that's been crashing. Or if it's just been all of them. So what does the XP graph look like? Actually, it is even. They were getting that advantage. Uh, the rating were getting that advantage early on. Um, but they do have the advantage in farm. You have to be careful of that. And I have to update my things. Because this is no longer that matchup. It is IG versus EG. Update. All right. Change that one, avoided it, that confusion. Haven't really, haven't seen any team really commit to anything yet. They did have Malk coming in for a gank, but that was revealed off too quickly, and Ferrari was able to get away from that. It's going to be hard to hit, uh, it's going to be hard to hit Templar Assassin with that melt. I don't even think they have a reveal. They do. So Chen could pop down a ward. Demon coming back into the game. IG has been really doing really well in this matchup. All right, EG is back. Yeah, ready to go. There's always some reason you have to pause in these games, isn't there? And we have this ward placed down. That is gonna that that makes it harder for e Demon to get any farm. Uh, it makes him harder to stay in lane. And actually, he's gonna go right on Chuan right now. Actually, getting a good amount of last hits for that one. And taking two, taking a ton of damage from Tidehunter though. Tidehunter is pretty powerful. Didn't have a gush available. But that would have not spelled good things. He's gonna give himself a chakra, get some magic back, mana back. And Malk's still sitting in here in the middle lane. They really do want to. They really do want to try to get this first blood. They really do want that first blood gold. But I think they might do better in this top lane uh, with YYF pushed up. They just need to lock him down at the Troll Warlord. I don't think they'll be able to get a Centaur stun off. So they have to watch out for Venomancer. Venomancer is coming in here, trying to stop the pulls from happening. And Universe has to back himself away. Not even... Actually, he is going to be able to get the pull there. And it is... Uh, I think it was Venomancer that kind of pulled him. 
should be able, they should turn around and he should be able to get it, only taking a good amount of damage. Actually, nope, they're going to be pulled all the way into the lane. So good job there from Faith. Making sure the creep wave, making sure the creep wave doesn't get pulled. Uh, but he should be able to stack this camp and get that one. Bulba here pushing up in the top lane, uh, pushing up in here in the mid lane. He's got his uh, blades of attack, trying to get more damage out of Ferrari. He doesn't have, he doesn't have any uh, damage per second, or sorry, DPS. Sort of uh, poison stings that are able to go up against really well against Templar Assassin because of that reflect the refra refraction that has five instances that negate damage. So you have to hit her five times before you're able to get anything. Is going to go right now on Bulba. Bulba taking a good amount of damage, and he's not going to be finished off. Although if they do get a lucky side blade that would do a lot of damage, he is going to regen himself up with Quas. He doesn't have his boots yet, but once he gets his phase boots, he might be a little bit more mobile. Might be able to do something against Templar Assassin, but right now. Uh, Templar Assassin looking pretty safe in this lane. Perhaps if he, you know, he doesn't, he's not building up four spirits either, so he's not going to be able to melt down that refraction uh, before Templar Assassin can get herself away. It is six minutes into the game, and we haven't had a first blood, and it doesn't look like there's anyone that's going to look to be setting it up uh, quite yet, although Bulba did take a lot of damage. Now Ferrari going to pressure him in, dive right in, using that refraction. As much as, as much as he can. Which one? Not too much action coming out from here, but he's level four. Going for level six. Level six may see some may see some uh, aggressive plays. No wraith van finished up yet. Don Zo Joe. He's got 37 last hits. Lone Druid's got 37 last hits. So both doing pretty well in terms of farm. And pretty evenly matched right here. Gonna be probably rushing the radiance, although actually we do have a phase boot, so it's not gonna be a completely naked radiance. Making sure, eg, make, eg, fear, making sure that uh, he doesn't get locked down. And right now, he's his 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 uh, he has a troll warlord, so he needs to make someone have one of these ganks. His effect nemesis is gonna start running out in about ten to fifteen minutes. He really wants to start it off. This is usually the time you see like a tower come out, tower push come in, make sure blood happens. We do have Lashrak coming in. The universe has been spotted out by face, so they know that they need to be defensive right now. And not committing yet. It is always uh, it is always hard for it looks like it's hard for these uh, Western teams to commit against these Eastern teams. They know that they know that IG is is a strong team can get away from team fights and turn them around. Turn around and gank in their favor. They're going to get the uh, actually refraction damage is able to save that one. Saw it just before it hit. Keep the light is here. It looks like Universe has gone back. Um, give them more free farm to Lishak. They're just trying to push it in. It looks like they're not going to be able to get Ferrari. And the refraction is just able to save her. They really just don't have anything to stop that. Venomancer is picked up by their team. And that. Venomancer is a big counter to Templar Assassin. Just because every right click he does, does poison sting. And that's the damage over time. But yeah, see, they just, they, they haven't been able to damage Ferrari at all. Bulba hasn't had any lane control. But it's really going to be a farming game. EG looking to just stop themselves and make sure that they don't lose map control early on and uh, they do have Keeper of the Light that's able to push back these waves pretty easily <laughs> not get too bad in terms of farm he has actually a Quelling Blade probably for um, probably for jungling perhaps actually they're going to go up here they're going to try to get the kill on Fear they're going to block him off he's going to be focused down on he's not going to be able to get away from this we have the vacuum coming out oh no but we have Keeper of the Light popped up in here Chuan goes down first blood is Chuan Fear is still alive although YYF is caught out they're trying to turn it around they don't got to get away from that Ion Shell Ion Shell he's going to haste himself in and he's almost going to do it he does get the second blood actually is two go down two for two trade we do lose Invoker in the middle lane and Malk is going to be Malk is going to be focused down on two right now this is a two for two trade, slightly in favor of EG. They do get the first blood, but they do lose their carry. Uh, so it's hard to say exactly who went out on that match. It was kind of even.
Getting a kill on fear means this is going to take a little bit longer for him to get that radiance finished up. And that is... No, he went up to the top lane again. It was a good block, and uh, I think maybe if... I think maybe if Darkseeker didn't cast off the... Uh, didn't cast off the vacuum, fear might not have been able to get away. I'm not sure, though. He was locked down. We do have a root coming up on Chuan. He's going to eat himself. Keeper of the Light Nuke. But he's going to be backing away in this tier. One tower is going to be pressured. That would be a great thing for EG to have. But it looks like the uh, IG is going to be here to defend. But Malk is here. Fear is here. They do have some creeps. They do have Keeper of the Light. This should go down. Universe is here again. And he has Edict up. Edict is going to be able to finish off the tower. Don't know if they're going to be going to push in again further they are going to be able to save their bottom tier one tower so they do have a tower advantage right now that gives them a little bit extra gold a little bit extra room and 2,000 gold up on the uh up on the nature the lone druid still going to take a little while before that radiance the radiance is up i have to stop saying that someone pointed out uh that american casters like to say that this that the other thing so i'm going to try to say something else Perhaps it is just an English language thing. I'm not sure. It is a great thing for EG to have that early map control, making sure that IG isn't going to be able to pressure in their tier tier one tower. They aren't able to just teleport themselves in and then go. Uh, that t it takes a little bit more, a little bit more time for them to set up, set up the ganks. They have to teleport in here, or they have to come in through the side, which is a little bit more dangerous or through the jungle, which has been, uh, they've actually warded off pretty well, and Fear has been controlling it, though, so they've been guarding that. Uh, they're going to go for a smoke gank right now, trying to get this kill on <laughs> Venomancer. He's going to be caught out. Yeah, he's not going to be able to get away from this one. They have a teleport in. He's going to be finished off before he's able to do anything. Fear is, uh, sorry, Ferrari is now here. He's going to go into the three heroes. Edict damage is what's going to be able to push him back. He's going to have to play a little bit more safe. We have one kill in favor of IG. Plus one tower, so they may be able to do pretty good against IG in this early game. Now, Universe picking up a double damage rune. I wonder if he's going to try to press. They don't have anyone. It looks like IG, now they are playing a little bit more safe. As you can see, they're a little bit more passive about going into the. Actually, they do take down a uh, tower, so they are evened up in towers, but they are playing a little bit more passive now that they 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 know that they can't just completely dominate team fights. Uh, so they are going to look to shore up their uh, shore up their their lanes and gonna go for some serious ganks. This is this is uh, this is Ferrari Chuan with the Ravage. We have Venomancer as ultimate isn't actually available, and Darkseer. And uh, if they are going to be able to find a hero, and they should know where Lone Druid is, Fear needs to get himself away from this, or we're going to have a Ravage popped off. Ravage is going to be in range, and here it is. We have to pull himself in. They're not going to pop it off yet. He's actually going to go down to... Mel's going to deal a ton of damage to him, and he was able to be finished off no problem. So there's a second kill on Fear. That is really not what EG wants. A great play here from IG. And they get the kill. They get the kill that they wanted, pushing off that radiance just a bit longer. While Joe is able to farm himself up, he has already finished up a ghost scepter. This is this is dangerous. He's going for an early, an early shotgun, an early ethereal blade. The ethereal blade is going to be great against Chen. It's going to be great against Lashrak. It's going to be great against Keeper of the Light. So EG, I I, I don't know if they know they they see it in his inventory yet. Uh, but they do need to check that soon and make sure that they uh, they don't try to go in without some serious ganking power. For I just farming up the ancient camps, Blink Dagger finished up on Templar Assassin. She's going to look for some roaming ganks. They're going to give their their farm to, well, just Joe probably. And if she is supported like that, she should be able to do some good picking. Should be some slim picking. I mean, even the lone druid who's supposed to have a ton of hit points was just melted down by the melt. It deals so much damage. Even Bulbo would have was probably gonna be have to worry about it, but uh, he has that tornado, the tornado, and they're gonna go for it again. Smoke gank. They're gonna go the same route. They don't have any vision this time, uh, but neither do EG. 
Which is not the same route. They're taking a little bit shorter one. And they're going to be able to find themselves Chen. This is going to be bad for Chen. He's going to go down to this really fast. Here they go. Blink Dagger. One, two. Oh, keep it the latest here. He's going to deal a little bit of damage. That's not going to be enough. We have Tornado coming himself in. Demon might be finished off right now. He needs to get himself away. Where the heck? Hey, Temp teleports in Universe, making sure that he doesn't get caught out as well. But that is the second smoke gank successful for IG. That gives them... Uh, as gives them even more of an advantage. Make sure that EG knows that they are not safe in their own jungle. And it's a mental game right there. That is a mental win more than anything else. And it, it's just it's it's going to be a game that IG is just gonna to try to break break EG this way. And say so you are not safe where you think you are safe, therefore you have to back off, and therefore we can take over area. Although Joe is coming himself really far in here. Going to be focused down by Universe. It's still going to be really hard to kill him though. And uh, he's actually going to be able to get himself away. No problem. Just going to be free farming and he has 103 last hits. He's getting out of control right now. Eh, ooh, this is bad. This is not good. Uh, this Morphling is out of control and Lone Druid is being controlled. He can't, uh, he, has to, he has to go inside the jungle. He can't farm his lane too well. He needs his Radiance. But he hasn't even. I think he's going to be able to pick up his. He's going to be able to pick up the sacred relic, but it's going to be a little bit while before the radiance is available to him. Probably another four, four or five minutes, I would say. Especially if EG keep losing him. And EG trying to do something to keep the pressure in. Try to try to answer back to the ganks that they just received in their jungle. As you can see, they're not putting their squishies in the jungle uh, by themselves anymore, and they are grouped up, making sure that the smoke ganks don't happen again. But that is not the game that they really want to be playing because Tidehunter Ravage plus the Meld is really just a huge amount of team fight. And Chuan is going to be coming in here and he's going to be uh, yeah, grabbing himself in. Ravage has now popped off. This is what is the problem that they're talking about. Team fight is just too much. We lose Queep the right. We lose Invoker. Sunshine is going to come in. EMP hits off, but they aren't able to get any kills quite yet. Tower doing a little bit of damage to YYF. YYF. And, oh, University are going to try to take himself. Oh, he's going to pick himself up, YYF, but he's going to lose his life to this. Morphling is going to be able to take him down. And this is the team fight that, this is the team fight that IG, and wow, they lost, yeah, they lost everyone. So, mental game really working out for, mental game really working out for IG. Only the lone druid is out here farming. They're really banking a lot on him right now. They just lost a full team wipe, and they only lost one hero to it. And that is... And they had to actually trade for that hero. Like a serious trade. Like he had to come in from the back and then lose his life just to get a hero where he could have not even died. Keep it the latest. Good job at counter-pushing. But uh, he has to be safe. And uh, IG have just been, they've had a ton of map control and, and discipline together, pushing in lanes. What's the build here? So it doesn't even matter because he has so, such high level. I think XP is way in favor of the Radiant, Gold way in favor of the Radiant. And they're really looking for something on the mouth, just hasn't been able to get any ganks off. I think he got one because Venomancer is in a really bad position. But Joe. Finishing, getting close to that, ever close to that ethereal blade. This creep wave may have it for him. Not sure exactly what the recipe costs. I think it's about three thousand though. And have it going here. And Ferrari actually is going to be stunned up here by the mana league, just taking all the mana away from him. And he's just going to be able to get by by the tower. They're going to lose the tower. They actually have to commit five heroes to this. And don't get a kill for it. Gravity, oh no, that is not a good spot for you, man. Oh no, Demon is going to go down. He, uh, yeah, Demon does go down. They're going to try to get away. There's too much damage coming out. Malik is going to be finished off right now. That is two kills they get for a tower. And they thought they had it. They were backing off from it. But they just got pulled in by a great placement of gravity. If they were able to get a... If the Darkseer wall came up, that would have been even worse. They had the Venomancer ultimate that was there. And the Meld dealing just a ton of damage. I don't even know where was is Morphling. Morphling was here. Yeah, the Ethereal Blade I think might have been finished off by the time he was ready for that team fight. EJ is now definitely on the defensive, 
They know that their team fight isn't the thing that they really wanted to, and IG's out of control. Too much damage. Boba going down, being pulled in by the Darkseer. Great, great vacuums being placed by YYF, pulling out heroes that are trying to escape. Heroes that should be able to escape. The Quaswex Invoker should have been able to ghost walk, do something, force staff himself out, but he was pulled back in. They take more map control. This is the name of the game for the Chinese teams, I think. Really about the map control and the making sure that you know that your 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 opponent isn't safe. And the, they may not have like the physical map control, but they get the mental one. And that's what they need. They got the EG to group up and then take the game in grouping. And Morphling now is just too big. He can just pop off mouth whenever he wants. I am have a little bit of lag. And he is just getting ever bigger. I don't even think the Lone Druid has he finished up his Radiance. No, just as a Sacred Relic and pretty far away in terms for his rel for his uh, Radiance. Even at this part of the game, that would just allow him to farm more. He needs to be bigger and he needs to be uh, getting some kills. We have this top lane is going to be pushed in. Tower should be able to be taken down. Level 2 tower. I never actually noticed that it was a level 2. Probably because it didn't look. It was probably level 3, right? Maybe level 3. Okay, cool. Anyways, Tron backing himself off here. We have the rest of the team teeping themselves out. They're trying, they do get themselves the bottom tower. We lose. We lo oh, no. Fear is going to be caught off. Meld. We have Waveform coming in. And I think I see a Desolator up on Ferrari. That is not good. Fear goes down, pushing him back ever further from his Radiance, keeping his farm down, and Zhao Joe is actually up here getting a little bit of damage. Bulbo trying to stop him, we have Keeper of the Light putting it off, but it's just, look at this, the, the morph is just way too powerful. Uh, Zhao is still trying to get out, oh, he's going to be caught up by a Troll Trap, and I think this may be actually the end of him, he pushed himself too far, goes down, cut off by four heroes. But it does take four heroes to kill him. That is a big commitment, especially since the rest of his team wasn't even there to do any damage. Templar Assassin in this game has been doing really well. And they actually are going to trade Zo, Zo for Roshan. And perhaps that's what they wanted to do. Just send him out, let him die. He has a good amount of farm. Just get your Aegis. Put that up on Ferrari. And now you're going to push themselves in with Tidehunter. Morphling is still down. I don't think he's going to buy back. They're just looking for... Uh, they're just looking to control the lanes right now. Once he is back, I'd expect the team fight. I think that they can still take it um, before EG just gets any uh, important items up. Like, yeah, they just, they really just don't, they don't have any important items. They have some four staffs, maybe a mech, um, but that is really not going to be able to stop the damage that can come out from IG. Very well disciplined game. I don't see, they do have an aggressive ward placed here, so they know where a little bit about where they are and uh, EG has to play defensively it's not what they want to be doing, they want to be farming they want to be getting up items they want to be smoke gank smoke gank coming up here, they're going to look down the wonder if they're going to try to transition themselves all the way down and they do have the radiance, radiance is now finished up that is definitely a big item going to be able to see if that's going to be able to turn around the tide of a team fight if he's going to be able to survive a team fight um, but what are the levels looking like right now? Oh, the levels are not, not that great. Hero level, uh, 15 Morphling, 15 Templar Assassin, 13 YYF, and then the 12 with uh, Fear. So he's still just not big enough. We have Tidehunter as level 11, and the rest of the, the, rest of the Dire are just really low on levels. And they're going to have a hard time withstanding the damage that can, be com that can come out. Uh, so let us put it back onto Net Hero Worth. There it is. And it looks like still, as you can see, even more that it is YG that is controlling the farm in this game. It's controlling the gold. And the top tower actually goes down right here in the middle lane. They're going to take out the bear. Bear is going to be burst down, slowed. Can't get himself away. Actually, not going to blink that away. He's going to recharge the bear, but he's got two minutes before he can do that again, so he has to play a bear. A little bit safer. IG not going to stop when they know that they have the advantage. They don't want to give farm to their opponents. And it looks like they're going to try to pressure it in. And EG is going to defend 
they were just going to continue with their map control, continue to farm themselves, make sure that they deny as much amount of farm as EG as they can from EG. It's sort of a game of attrition right now. And then uh, just Morphling is going to get even bigger. Perhaps wait until they get the Manta style. Once they get the Manta style, I think that's about it that uh, Zhou really needs in order to decide that uh, team fights are going to be huge for him at this point. And actually, we're going to have YYF going to come in, pull himself off in vacuum. They're going to finish off the bear yet again. Uh, he's actually, the bear's just going to be low on life. And the EMP is going to hit off. Faith is going to take a lot of damage, but he's going to back himself away. EG has to spend all of their time to push back four heroes from IG while Morphling farms up the bottom lane and pushes it in. That's going to give them momentum in turn from the creep wave. That's what they need. Manta style is still pretty, still a little, a little bit of ways away. They're not going to be able to get a push. They're not going to have it for this push if they decide to make it, unless he's able to farm up these ancient camps. If he's able to do that and get all the last hits there, he might have it, but nope, it's just going to be his team that's going to be getting up the last hits. We have Desolator. Crystalis finished up on Ferrari. Ferrari is now very huge and is also a big part of this team fight. And as well as Tidehunter, I mean. With the blink dagger, he can smoke his own. He doesn't need anything else in this game. And uh, we have the jump true sight up on faith is good for counter warding. Smoke here from EG. Let's see who they're going to catch out. They may actually get themselves a tide hunter, but that's not really what they want because they can put up a rabbit. Oh, they stun him up before they can get rabbits. They're going to be able to hold him. Oh, there's a little bit of lag spike. We do have a rabbit. They are going to be melted themselves down. I almost missed what was going to happen. We have the wall popped off right now. Too many heroes down, four of them down. Fear has to run himself away. Keeper of the Light is going to be... Uh, actually, we're going to burn himself in Aegis on Templar Assassin. Fear is taking a lot of damage right now, and he's going to go down. Faith is low on life, but he's going to be able to survive. Keeper of the Light narrowly escapes somehow. I don't even think he's probably part of the team fight. They try to push themselves in. Not going to be able to get a, get a kill with that. Uh, not going to be able to pick, him up, pick anyone off, but this is going to be a Tier 3 tower. And uh, this is also going to be a melee barracks, I think. There's... I don't think uh, Lone Druid is going to be able to, he's not going to be able to buy back at all. And yeah, this is definitely going to be a barracks. Early on, we got 27 minutes, and they just have, EG just have no map control, unfortunately. And EG Demon giving his life away right now. So much damage from Ferrari. You're going to be able to finish him off. Universe is going to be focused down on now. And actually, Edict might be able to do it. Edict does take down Templar Assassin, but they do call the GG. And uh, actually, how did that? Uh, they have someone else calling the GG and closing them off early. Oop, where is the? What am I doing? Okay, there it is. Anyway, it's an exciting game to cast. IG just showing that they have the control, that they have the discipline to be able to form up against EG. And then at really, once those those two smoke gangs in the jungle, I really think uh, just started the things started things off badly for IG. But we're gonna go to game two and see what happens. So perhaps if you're watching yeah I don't have anyone watching. That's okay. I like to practice. Game two coming up. <laughs> 